Hey guys, what's going on? It is me, Box 12 here, and welcome to my very first Top 10 Rotmeg video. Now, originally, I was going to be posting a different Top 10 video, but at the last second, I changed my mind, so if you could bear with me, I understand that this is going to be kind of a weird list, and not many people would do it, but today, we are looking at the Top 10 coolest quest monsters in Realm of the Mad God, and that includes any of the Lowlands monsters, Highlands monsters, you know, you name it. If they're in that little red box in the corner of your screen that says Quest, then they count. The only thing that we're not going to be including are the event gods because they only spawn upon a certain command, so they're not always present in the realm. Plus, let's be honest, there's seven of them and they're all epic looking. They would take the cake almost every time and we want to give all of these other amazing monsters a fighting chance. So without further ado, let's jump right into this. Coming in at number 10, we have the Scorpion Queen. Yes, she is bland looking, that's actually why she's at number 10, but she is a classic realm character. Whenever you were a new player and you first entered the realm, what was the first monster that you saw in that little red box? It was the Scorpion Queen. She's a classic realm monster and I just couldn't help but put her on the list. We've all fought her. And let's be honest, scorpions are cool. She's just, come on, she looks cool. Moving on. Number 9, Giant Crab. Taking a step up in creativity, we have a giant crab monster that also spawns in the desert who actually chases after you. This is the first time that you've ever really been chased in Realm if you were a new player, and it's it's pretty cool. I'm not going to lie. The first time that I saw this giant crab, I thought I was going to die, and then I actually took some hits and realized he's not that strong, but he is incredibly cool looking. It's a giant crab. Crabs are cool. Look at his arms. Yes. Number eight. Now, this is where decisions start to get difficult for me. And there should be no reason why this is number 8. Lich. Lich is a monster that even whenever you're 8-8, you still fight because you have to defeat him in order to close the realm. Yet for some reason, I just like these other 7 better. But the Lich is still an amazing looking character. He has skin that is pale white, like a skeleton. He has a golden crown, like the Midas touch. And he has a silk red robe like the blood of his enemies. He is an undead mage that can raise the dead and attack you with his mummies and heal. I mean, geez, I've never seen so many people at once attack something and have it not die. He is pretty cool. He is very cool. I like his design, and but, you know, there's... Like I said, this is where the list is going to start to get funky. <laughs> Number seven. Oh boy. Desert Werewolf. Okay, now usually whenever I'm deciding what's cool, I put it into two categories. Color and design. And this guy does not have color. The only reason that I like him better than the Lich is design. Purely, 100% design. And the cool design about the Desert Werewolf is that he has his own rage phase. I like the idea that he's an anthropomorphic canine with four eyes and he's in the desert and that's really cool. But whenever you start to damage him a lot, he starts glowing red, yelling, and he actually chases after you. This is how you get ready for rage, like in Tomb Bosses, alright? Werewolf? Nut. I can't even tell the difference. Coming into number six, we have the Great Lizard. Now you're gonna start to see a theme here. I like the desert enemies. It's a giant freaking orange lizard that just charges after you out of nowhere. Literally, he will be off screen, and if he gets within his, like, vision range of you, he will just dart after you and then start shooting you. I mean, it's freaky the first time that you encounter this thing whenever you're a new player, and I just find that to be such a cool element of the game. The element of surprise. It's amazing, and plus, Kabam actually gave him a separate animation for whenever he attacks, and I can respect that. Thank you, that was, that was a good, that was, that was good. Number five. Okay, well, I'm not gonna lie. I didn't think that this guy was that cool at first, but after giving it some thought and really breaking it down, I realized I had to put him on the list. The Kage Kami. No, not Cage Kami. Kage Kami, the Shadow God, or Shadow Spirit. Whenever you're just looking at a stationary picture of him, yeah, okay, maybe he's not that cool, but whenever you actually fight him, it is a very interesting battle. First of all, the dude lives in a graveyard. That's cool. Second of all, he has pale white skin, glowing red eyes, and a black shroud like a shadow. This adds to the whole spirit idea, where he can't be touched and he just chases after you like he's trying to possess your body or something. I mean, it's freaky, but dang is it cool. Okay, wait, hold on. Before we move on, I need to clear something up. I know that there's going to be one guy in the audience that goes, Hey! He's not a quest boss. You suck. Let me explain. All the monsters that I've talked about so far appear in that little red box in the corner of your screen. Plus, there's multiple of them in one realm. The Kage Kami is the exact opposite. There's only one per realm, and you don't get a quest for it. That's why you would probably think 
that he's not a quest monster, right? No. The Kage Kami is known as a set piece boss, which means he spawns in a specific area on the map and only in that area. Before the Kage even spawns and after he's dead, the area will remain there for the entire time. It's like the Lich or the Ent, the Oasis Giant or Phoenix Lord. They're all set piece bosses, but they're still quest monsters. So even though the Kage doesn't have an actual quest portrait, and there's only one per realm, it is still a set piece boss, and since we're including them on the list, we have to include the Kage. What, is that not good enough? Okay, um, number, new number five, freaking Phoenix Lord, because it's a bird, it's on f fire, moving on. Remember whenever I said the list was going to get funky? Yeah, this definitely takes the cake. Number four, Shambling Sludge. To be honest, I don't, I don't really know why I like this guy so much. I mean, he's just a green blob with a giant hole in his body, symbolizing a mouth. His eyes are all distorted around his body. He slows you. Yeah, that's, that's interesting. He spawns little mini sludges everywhere, but all around, what's unique about him? Well, this is where it starts to get funky, like I said, in the terms of feel. I just get a feel from him. He looks like this distorted mess among the planes that just comes after you and just... I don't know. He's just... I don't know. I don't know, man. What am I doing? Number three. Now this decision can actually be justified. The Goblin Mage. Ever since I was a new player, and I fought the Goblin Mage, as soon as I saw him, I knew that I liked him, among all of the little minions running around the forest. I liked him so much for some reason. I don't really know why. Maybe it's because he looks like a Christmas goblin. He's got, you know, red and green. Yeah. He just looks cool. He's got the, oh, look at the little horns. are so cute. He's cool. I like him, he's got his little staff, he's got his thousands of minions that he spawns, that it comes with, and, you know, it's funny, I like the little sound effect, maybe it's like, I don't know, maybe it's like a nostalgia thing that I get whenever I'm with him. Maybe I just think, oh man, this was, those were the good old days whenever I used to think that he was like a tough enemy, and I used to fight him all the time because he was my level. I don't know, I really like his design, I think it's cool, but I knew that just nostalgia alone couldn't be a real factor in my personal favorite monster. Um, but that's definitely a big reason why he's up here. Number two. Now, this is where it gets hard. Now, I kind of knew what my number one was going to be as soon as I saw all of my choices, but it's still, you know, my choices could change on a day-to-day -day basis. So, for now, number two, Sandman King. We've all seen the huge mosh pit of enemies in the desert with all the Sandman Kings, occasionally a giant crab, and all of their animations going to town, and it's just a huge mess. I mean, an 8-8 knight could die in there. An area that only a level 2 or 3 is supposed to go to. That's intense. I, c I can respect that. That is cool. Wow, that is... Wow. That's pretty awesome. Also, his design is pretty cool. He's got his little crown. He's got green eyes. I like that. His little black... Uh, whatever... What is that? I don't know. He's got, like, stone armor, a sword. He's cool. I like sand. Can I, can I just be honest? I like sand. I like the beach. Gara. Sand King. I like sand. Sand is cool. And finally, number one, the Great Coil Snake. I love, I, I absolutely adore the design of the Great Coil Snake. He's all coiled up. He's an orange snake with growing yellow eyes. He lives in the ruins that have like this dark jungly green contrast to his bright orange and bright yellow eyes. It's, it's, uh, I love it. I love it. He Also, he drops a Forbidden Jungle that has one of my favorite dungeon bosses in it, Mixcotal. It's really cool. I like his design. I like how he's a big snake. I like how he's all coiled up. I like how there's shading underneath each coil. He's very cool. I like his design, and every time I see a coil snake, I can't help but want to fight it and go into the jungle because, one, nostalgia, and two, it's just a fun little adventure to go on, and I feel like that's what Realm's all about. Anyway, guys, thank you for watching. This has been my top 10 coolest quest monsters, and I understand this is going to be entirely opinionated, so pretty much every list will be different, and that's why I want you to post in the comments what your favorite top 10 is. I'm really intrigued to see what you guys have to offer, because this is a wild card with everyone. Anyway, thank you guys for watching, and as always, don't forget to check out the next episode whenever I post it, which will probably be soon. Also, leave a comment for another top 10 that you want me to talk about, if you want me to. Who knows? Maybe we'll actually agree on something. Alright. See ya!